Hello, my name is Guinevere and I am going to show you my process for completing this portrait with Copic markers and I'm going to give you all of my tips and tricks along the way. First things first, I like to start with the really light colors. So this would be like the zero zeros of any particular color. And I just like to get an idea of where I want like the pinker colors or maybe there's some purples and blues in the skin. Get those in first. And you always wanna make sure to keep your highlights as white as possible for as long as possible. This is sort of similar to working in watercolor. So when I work in watercolor, I always start with lighter colors and then gradually work my way into the darker colors. As you can see, I've actually made little bubbles around where the really highlights are on her face so that that way I remember not to accidentally color over those. I'm not gonna leave them pure white, but I do wanna save those until the end once I've gotten a lot of my other values in place. I have found with Copics, I do like to use a lot of different colors and gradually build up shades so it's a lot of layering and layering of different colors and different shades. If you're gonna do a lot of layering, it's important to have a paper that can handle that because the markers will bleed through some papers. I'm using a Bristol board and you can see that it's pretty thick. It's almost like a cardstock, and it looks like I'm getting a little low. I might have to get some more. Let me tell you a little bit about this face. So this is not me, but it is a selfie. Occasionally I'll go on Instagram and just look under the selfie hashtag and there's millions of selfies on there. And so I think it's just kind of a fun place to go and look for interesting faces that, you know, aren't a famous person, but somebody that just is having fun with a selfie. As you can see, this is Anzel Jance Van Rensburg. I hope I pronounced that correctly. And she was clearly just having a good time. So I'd like to reward her for her courage in posting such a fun selfie by doing this portrait of her. And now we have the opportunity to go show her some love and thank her for this great picture. So if you wanna head over to Instagram, go ahead and give her a like and maybe leave a comment. I'd love to see her face when she sees her portrait. Okay, so now you can see that I did put a black down on her shoulders. I don't usually go this dark this early on in the process, but I actually had to go buy the black. I didn't own black before, and I had to go buy the uh, middle and dark turquoise colors as well. So I went ahead and put the black in so that I could really get a feeling for how dark I was eventually going to go. Because the original picture has a lot of dark color in it, and eventually this picture is going to have to get quite a bit darker. And now you can see I'm slowly starting to bring in some of the darker values, but I'm still using colors. And so I'm gonna clue you in on another really important tip. It's that piece of paper on the left with all the numbers written on it. One thing that I found early on is that Copics, when you put them down, they're wet. And so it's always gonna be darker when you first put it down. And then once it dries, the color's a bit lighter. So it's pretty important to have a swatch of all your colors so that you really know what that color is going to look like when it's dry. Sometimes it can be pretty scary to put a color down and you think, oh no, it's too dark, I messed it up. And then, you know, give it 10 minutes and it dries and it looks much better. So I just made a swatch by writing all the numbers in the marker color uh, and I did them in sections. So the violets here and the reds here. And this gives you a really good guide of what the color is going to look like when it's dry. One of these days I might get around to actually printing out one of those charts and filling it out so that it's a little bit more organized. Here you can see in real time an example of layering. So on the first pass, you get sort of a lighter transparent look to the color. And then when I go over it again, it's the same color, but it just gets darker. So even with one marker, you kind of get two shades out of it. You get like a slightly lighter one and then the darker, more pure color. You can also see how I went over the gray with the turquoise color. And this leads me to possibly another technique that I might try on a future drawing where I'll use just grays and then go back with colors over it. I haven't done it before, but it might be worth a shot. 
If you love realist art, markers, and painting, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified. As I mentioned earlier, I did have to go and buy the middle and dark turquoise colors because I didn't own those before starting this. And so I only had those two colors really to get the varying shades in the turquoise of her shirt and in her hair. So the shirt did come out a bit more stark than I would like. I'm a big fan of smooth gradients and I just couldn't get that done with only two colors. I think that my love of gradients is one of the reasons I love markers because it's really challenging and I just love the challenge. In the skin tones, especially in the shadows, I like to use a lot of different colors. So in the shadows, I tend to use some of the grayish browns and sometimes even uh, blues and purples because I think that adding a lot of different color in really helps make it look a little bit more lifelike. I mean, you can see on her cheeks, I put the red, which is quite a bit of red, um, but eventually after some more layers, it kind of blends out and smooths out a little bit. And also the original photo was quite dark, so I do still have a ways to go in making it a bit darker. As I filled in more of the black around her face, then I could clearly see just from relationship to the black that the skin needed to go a bit darker. And so that's one of the keys in all art is watching your values. And sometimes it does take putting a darker color in that you know this is gonna be my blackest black. And that way you can kind of get a ratio and comparison of how dark everything else needs to be. In those highlight bubbles, I did decide to put my lightest yellow. And as soon as I did it, I thought, oh no, that's too much, it's way too yellow. But again, you gotta just be patient, let it dry. And again, I also continued to darken the rest of the skin. So if you watch like the last 10 seconds of the video, you can see the dramatic change in color, how I just kind of really went for it and went a bit darker right at the last minute. And that kind of mellows out the yellow so it doesn't look so quite so vibrant and quite so out of place. I think I also went over the edges of it with my E00, which is one of my favorite colors to use for blending skin. Do you have a favorite color that you use most often? If so, let me know in the comments. If you have any questions that I haven't answered, please be sure to ask them in the comments and I'll try to answer them in my next video. I'll give you a quick sneak peek of what's coming up next. And I'm very excited that I'm doing some experimentation with gouache as well. I hope that this has inspired you to do some of your own portraits. If you were gonna do a portrait, who would you choose? I sure had a lot of fun doing this one and I'll probably do another one similar of another random person on Instagram Maybe I'll do a whole series of those, who knows? I hope you found this helpful and entertaining. I'll see you in a few weeks with the next video. And if you miss me, I got lots of other videos you can check out that are already online. Oh, I also just started a TikTok account, so if you wanna throw me a like and a follow over there, I'll see you there.